Hi, I'm Michael Hilke and I'm going to present you my work on localization and delocalization for strong disorder in one-dimensional continuous potential. The idea is to look at localization, which is a phenomenon which can occur for many different systems such as electromagnetic waves or mechanical waves. It can also occur for quantum particles such as atoms, electrons or photons or even in time-dependent fluctuations. The idea is to look at a wave equation, shown here, where p of x is simply the classical momentum which depends on the random potential v of x. For a random potential or a random medium, what we consider is an incoming particle or an incoming wave, and this uh, particle can either be fully transmitted, in which case we have a delocalized system, or it can be partially uh, reflected or fully reflected, which corresponds to a localized system, or it can be partially transmitted and partially reflected. In a quasi-one-dimensional setting, we can integrate out the transverse direction, and we are left over with a potential which only depends on one variable, in this case, x. This potential can be described by a correlation length, L, which defines basically the roughness of that potential. In more, in more detail, we can define a correlation function, a two-point correlation function, which characterizes that potential. The simplest form of a correlation function would be a Gaussian, and in this case we can evaluate the transmission as a function of the energy and correlation lengths, and we find that in some cases, especially for large correlation lengths, we have a delocalized behavior where the transmission is close to one, or for intermediate correlation lengths, we have a localized behavior, while for, for long, for very small correlation lengths, we have a delocalized behavior again. The, this small correlation length uh, looks something like that, where, where we have the, blue, the black trace here, or medium correlation lengths would look like this blue trace, while for large correlation lengths it would look like the red one. And in general we can evaluate the transmission, which will decay exponentially with some decay rate, which we call the Lyapunov exponent and termed lambda. And this Lyapunov exponent uh, is plotted here as a function of correlation lengths for different values of the disorder, where the blue dots are the numerical um, evaluated Lyapunov exponent, while the red line is the Born approximation. At higher disorder and higher correlation lengths, we see that the numerics and the Born approximation uh, don't match anymore, and we have a breakdown of that Born approximation. We, we can look at that in more detail and um, look at the Lyapunov exponent as a function of the disorder strength, sigma k, and we see again that the blue line here uh, is not the same as the red line, and that's because of the break again this breakdown at high disorder. And this is the thrust of our paper where we try to understand what happens also at high disorder. So in order to do that we looked instead of looking at the standard uh, wave equation shown here which has no general solution we looked at something which looks much more complicated by adding a, a nonlinear term but it turns out that the solution of that is explicit and that's why we're considering this. So this additional nonlinear term is actually very small and here we show the the disorder potential, which is kV of x, which is basically just the, the difference between the average momentum and the classical momentum. But if we now take the difference between the quantum momentum, which is minus i dx minus the classical momentum p of x, which is the green line, we see that it's much smaller than the disorder potential. And if we average over disorder, like shown here with the red uh, brackets, uh, we see that it basically this difference vanishes. So this nonlinear term, average of disorder, is very, very small. And now, with this equation, we can actually find an explicit solution of the, of the amplitude of psi of x, which is uh, given here, and uh, it depends on the function f of x, which is basically just the difference between the classical momentum and some other function fv of x, which depends on the disorder potential. The task now is to take the disorder average over that, of that function. This disorder average can be expressed in terms of a of this of a new correlation function C P of x, which depends on the derivative of the disorder potential K V prime, and that's the reason we use P as a, for, as label for that correlation function. We can evaluate this uh, disorder average and obtain that the Lyapunov exponent is simply the imaginary part 
of an integral uh, involving this new correlation function CP of y. Uh, we can show the agreement between the numerics and our nonlinear approach, which is shown here with the blue dots, which are the non is, is the nonlinear approach, while the blue lines is the, the exact numerics. And we see that basically it follows very well um, all the way up to, to strong disorder while the Born approximation shown here in red uh, fails to describe the high disorder limit. And uh, to look at that as a function of correlation lengths, we also see that again the numerics and the nonlinear approach, uh, which is the blue line and the blue dots, match perfectly while the Born approximation fails to describe the correct behavior. So uh, to conclude, we, we, we have found a new way to calculate the Lyapunov exponent for any disorder strengths, and it basically is just um, uh, we just have to evaluate this correlation function CP of x. This has important impl implication for for many systems such as uh, electromagnetic waves or quantum particles, and explains why localization is sometimes very difficult to observe, especially at very small uh, correlation lengths. So with this, I hope. Um, you will be interested uh, in reading our paper for more details and I thank you for your attention.